Welcome back to 8701. So in this short video, we'll talk about effects of normalization and higher order QED diagrams. And we have already seen that when we perform the integration um, of a matrix element over uh, Q, um, that there's infinities. And those infinities can be uh, gotten around with by introducing a cutoff scale and then only introducing uh, only integrating up to this cutoff scale. Um, and then as an effect, we normalize or redefine masses and couplings involved. So the first of such an effect or effect of a higher order is the so-called vacuum polarization. So you have higher order contributions, which you know look like this, an additional loop, which you can think about in the, the photon is so energetic that it can polarize the vacuum and produce a, a particle-antiparticle pair. And that particle and antiparticle pair then provides kind of a screening of the charge you want to probe. So imagine this particle here emits a photon and wants to probe the charge, electric charge of this particle. The fact that there is um, this vacuum polarization going on screens the charge you actually want to probe. So effectively, you see a charge which is either reduced or increased depending on the effect, on the sort of effect. Um, for the fine structure content, constant, remember alpha is one over 137, alpha at zero. Um, we measure that the uh, value of alpha slightly increases as we go to higher and higher energies. And so this has been measured in many places, experimentally confirmed, for example, at lab where at the mass of the W or the scale of the W mass, the value of alpha has been measured to one over 128. And you can do this analytically. You can calculate what the scale of the effect is and plot it. So you see here the running of alpha QED uh, as a function of the energy scale. And you see this increase here. There's another interesting point. As you open up masses uh, new, new particles of higher masses, quark and antiquark pairs, you find this kind of stepping approach here, the new particles, for example, the muon, antimuon, or quarks and antiquarks are allowed to do this stepping approach. All right, so this is first the first effect, vacuum polarization. The second effect is uh, very interesting, probably one of the most famous higher order processes in QED, and it has to do with the anomalous magnetic moment. The magnetic moment is defined as a factor G of times E over 2M times S the spin of the particle. Diagrams of this form here modify the vertex. So instead of having a vertex like this, you have higher orders which modify the vertex. And this leads them to um, a, a modified uh, magnetic moment of the fermion involved in this case of an electron which can also be defined as a muon or a tau or any other fermion. So this was shown by Schwinger already in uh, 1948 um, and then experimentally confirmed many times after that this g minus g factor which is two uh, leading order is modified to two plus pi over alpha at next to leading order. We can calculate this to many orders um, and with uh, a mind-blowing precision. So the precision is better than 10 to the minus 12 right now. I think it's 1.7 to 13 at this stage. And experiments have tried to measure this to find new effects. Imagine you can have new particles which make modifications to the magnetic moment here. Um, and, and you would have sensitivity by making experimental measurements. So the electrons and also the muon G minus two have been measured with, with very high precision, no new physics has been observed, but some uh, differences, um, some differences or small differences that, um, uh, have caused quite some uh, excitement about further improvements in G minus two measurements specifically for the neurons. Those are ongoing at this point. 